guys, DeAndre Yates here, and welcome to another episode of Subtract Reactions, where we subtract the bullshit and give you guys honest reactions. So before I jump into this reaction, I uh, had a weird fucking dream last night. I don't know why, like, it's sticking with me right now, and I don't know why it's coming to me right now. It's just on my mind, so I kind of want to talk about it. So in the dream, I uh, was working in, like, this small little building next to, like, these railroad tracks. And I can't remember, like, what the job was. I just remember that I worked there, you know what I mean? It's really weird. It's like I remember just, like, certain aspects of the street. But anyways, I worked here, and um, there was a train coming by. And, like, so the building kind of rumbled a little bit whenever the train went by. So I remember walking outside and looking at this train as it went by. And I looked down in the distance, and I saw another train coming. And it was, like, on a collision course. And uh, this train was like going fast and shit that went by me. And I was like, holy fucking shit, these trains are about to hit each other. So I don't know, like I remember just like running down the street and I'm yelling because there's like people everywhere, like other shops and shit where people are working. And I remember like I was running, I was like, hey, these trains are about to crash. These trains are about to wreck. These trains are about to fucking crash into each other. But no one's listening to me. Nobody's listening to me. It's like I'm yelling my ass off and like everybody's just like not listening. So all of a sudden these trains fucking smash into each other and it's like something out of Super 8. If you've seen that movie. If not, just go on YouTube and search up Super 8 train crash scene. And uh, it was just like that. I'm talking about train cars are flying all over the place. Destruction, chaos, fires everywhere. You know what I mean? Michael Bay directed this fucking scene. People are like running all over the place and there's train cars just falling all around me. And I remember just like being able to run out of like the chaos, like as train cars are falling around me, I was able to like survive and get out of there. Here's the weird thing, I remember getting out of the train wreck and like it stops and then I remember just like it being the next day. Like all of this shit took place in day, but like I just remember all of that stuff happening and then it was just like cut to the next day. I don't know, I can't remember if like there was anything in between, you know, after the wreck and know it being the next day but I just remember it felt like it was the next day so I was walking back to like where my job was and where this you know crazy ass chaos happened and I remember there was this woman there was this like woman with me and I can't remember her face I don't remember if she talked to me I can't remember who she is I just remember that there was like this this, this girl with me I don't know who she is you know what I mean all of this is just so weird but I remember we was going to the train wreck and I was like come on let's go um, and I don't know if we were talking to each other because I just, I don't know, I can't remember those aspects. But I remember when we got back to where the wreckage happened, there was nothing except for one, like, train car that was on its side. Other than that, there was nothing else. It was so bizarre and it was weird to me. And so I remember, uh, walking up to, like, it was like a cargo container on its side. And I remember, uh, walking up to the cargo container with this girl and that's it. That's all I remember. I don't remember, like, you know, making it to the cargo container. I just remember walking up to the cargo container with this girl to, like, the right side of me. And then that's all I remember. Like, it's so weird. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's the things with dreams, man. I don't know. It's just, like, it's just so weird how it's, like, I remember just certain points in the dream versus remembering the entire dream in its entirety. But also, I kind of want to look into it, you know, what I mean? maybe it meant something specific or maybe it was just random as fuck. I don't know. It's just so weird how vivid this dream was, you know what I mean? Like, I close my eyes, and I can fucking see this train, you know, rushing past me, and there's another train in the distance, and it's just like I'm running, and I'm, like, yelling at everybody, telling them to fucking look out, this train's fucking about to crash into this other one, and then it happens, and it's just like all these cars start flying all over the place. It's like all this destruction and chaos happens. I don't know, man. It's really weird. It's really boggling to the mind. So, I don't know why I fucking stuck this video off like that. Uh, I just wanted to talk about that, I guess. I'm sorry. But uh, today I'm going to be reacting to Thank You For Your Service. This trailer came out, I think, about like a month or two ago, so I'm kind of late on it, but it looked pretty interesting, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a reaction. It has Miles Teller in there, and it looks like he's playing a soldier, so Miles Teller is getting whatever he does. But you know, even with Fan uh, Force, it, you know, like, uh, you could tell the actors were trying with, you know, what they had, so I definitely think this is going to be pretty interesting. And, uh, yeah, I mean, let's jump into it. I rode shotgun in the lead Humvee, and I looked for bombs. Stop the truck. You don't see the bomb unless they want you to. What you got? I don't see nothing, man. You don't see it. 
He feels it. I was a good soldier. I had purpose, and I loved it. You kicked some ass over there? Yeah. Yeah, man. We wanted it to really? be perfect. I'm home with my favorite girls. It's perfect, baby. Am I wow. getting late or what? Oh, yeah. You're getting late. Maybe I'm foolish. How long have you been up? It's already 4 p.m. in Baghdad. Got one chocolate chip smiley face pancake for you. She doesn't like chocolate. Okay. I guess I missed that part. I'm only human. Two Army Commendation Medals. An Army Achievement Medal. Impressive. You never told me you were a hero. Don't spare me the details. I can take anything but quiet. Some people got the real problem. You are my hammer out there. Don't let these young guys see you fall. I don't belong here. He did his job. Now do yours. I'm only human after all. I'm only human. You alright? No, I'm not alright. Can't name him after me. He's too perfect. Is there a specific incident that troubles you? This don't look like much of a life, but every morning I get up, I'm grateful. I'm alive because of you. I'm only human, made mistakes. I'm only human, so it takes to put the pain on me. Thank you for looking after my son. I'm not a hero. We're brothers. We look after each other. I'm only human, after all, don't put the blame on me. That got me, man. That captivated me the entire time I was fucking into that trailer. That was really nice. That was a really nice trailer. Miles Taylor looks like he's going to kick ass in this. And I don't know. This looks like a really cool insight to kind of like how soldiers feel after they leave the combat zone. We've gotten a lot of stories like this in the past, but there's just something about this that I don't know. Um, obviously, you know, they threw Lone Survivor and American Sniper. They threw those titles at us. So definitely made me remember those films. So... You know, I'm hoping that this is going to be in the limelight of those movies because, uh, you know, those are some pretty hard films to watch. That's the thing about war because, you know, I've never joined the military. I've never been in the military before. As a private citizen, you know, I have my own image of what it's like in those conflict zones. But you never really understand until you have experienced it for yourself. And that's why I have so much respect for soldiers. It's because, you know, they're willing to put themselves in those types of situations. And one consistent thing that I usually see with soldiers is that a lot of times politics isn't even on their mind whenever they're, you know, kind of in situations like this. It's one of those things where it's like the goal is to survive and you want to make sure that all your brothers and all your comrades you know, and for the ladies out there, all your sisters, um, you want to make sure that they have that opportunity to make it home. Um, because regardless of what your mission is, the goal is to survive. And the goal is to, you know, do whatever you need to do to get back home, to get back to that base, to just get back to safety. And when you come back home, you know, it affects you because, you know, you've been through so much and you've seen so much. This is going to sound weird, but in a way, you kind of, you get used to that lifestyle, you know what I mean? And it's like to just so suddenly get thrown back into how we live over here. It just has an effect on you. And that's just my personal opinion. The only way I can kind of relate that mindset, and it's not even really in the same category at all, um, but college. I was at WKU. Uh, about a year and a half ago, and, you know, I'm a college dropout, uh, it got expensive really fast, and I just couldn't afford it anymore, that's actually why I'm back here living with my parents, uh, it's because it just didn't work out for me, the change between, you know, college and coming back home was so fast and so jarring to me, and it's crazy because, you know, I had a certain mindset when I was in college, um, and to just come back home and it's like, you know, the type of mindset that I had in college, I have fun and shit like that, drunk, party my ass off, but 
I don't know, it's like I found out that I couldn't stay there. And so I had to go back home and then I had to get a job and then I had to like start paying bills. And it's like, it fucked me up in the head because just like a week or two ago, I was at college and everything was fucking fine. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden I just got hit with reality and it's like, holy shit, like, what the fuck? It was just a clusterfuck, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, now I'm here, and it's like, I don't know, every now and then I just think about, like, damn, man, you know, I was in college, and just the mindset that I had, I had kind of like a party mentality, but at the same time, it was just like the professionalism that I had for myself was just, I don't know, it was really cool, you know what I mean? And it's like, ever since I left... It just, it did something to me. I don't know, I can't explain it. It's really weird. It's just, it, it fucked with my head a little bit, you know what I mean? But in terms of like relating to, you know, trying to adjust to life after you've been through something, I can definitely relate to that. Like I said, that is nowhere near the spectrum of what it's like to be a soldier, you know what I mean? To have to go through training, to, you know, have to go and be inside of these conflict zones. But in terms of trying to adjust in life again, I can definitely see, you know, how that's hard for people. Um, I'm going through it right now, so, so I'm trying to get down to California, I'm trying to fucking, I don't know, that's the goal in life, you know what I mean, experience life, man, uh, do whatever you can to live, you know what I mean, don't stay still, the secret to having a long life is you keep moving, you fucking live it, you know what I mean, but be into your choice, make sure that that's something you want to do, make sure that whatever you choose to do, that could possibly and potentially be something that you could be doing for the rest of your life. Make sure that that is a choice that you're absolutely comfortable with. Like me, for instance, I want to be a filmmaker. I want to be a creator. I got ideas and shit like that, cartoons. I made a fucking Rick and Morty first draft episode. It's just a random ass episode idea. This is really random, a really fucking random ass plug. I'll read that to you guys on like a live stream or I'll just make a video or something like that. Make sure that this is something that you want to do. And that goes for everyone. That goes for soldiers, that goes for military. You know, if you want to be a police officer, you can do that. If you want to be a filmmaker, you can do that. If you want to make music, I don't know, if you want to be a YouTuber for the rest of your life, you can fucking do that. Make sure that your heart is actually in it because if your heart isn't in it and if you absolutely aren't sure 100% that this is something that you want to do, it's going to show. And so, I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. But as always, guys, if you like my reaction, be sure to like and share this video for me. And if you're going to do that, I'm going to comment. Tell me what your reaction will future. And if you're going to do that, I'm to hit that subscribe button. Join the family, guys. I'm trying to say that as fast as I can. Yeah, but uh, sorry I got all deep with you guys. Um, yeah, man. Just make sure that whatever you're doing in life is something that you want to do. That's what all of that boils down to. And uh, yeah, this looks like a good one. Thank you for your service. I'm definitely going to try to check it out. Mouse Kelly.